All right, guys, look at this pretty card. This is what we're going to do during today's lesson. A cute little cabin in the woods, a bit of lovely solitude in a very pleasant setting. <laughs> anyway, it's a cute card. Let's get started. That's what happens when I try to get poetic early in the morning before coffee. Doesn't work very well. Good morning and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I am so happy that you're here. I'm happy that you are taking some time for yourself, doing something creative. Even if it's just watching something that's creative, it helps to get your mind started on ideas for yourself. This little card was a sketch that I did I did some sketching yesterday. Look at that. So this is what I did yesterday, just sketching in my sketchbook. These other two will be lessons coming soon. Little snowman looking up at a lighted up tree and a pile of peppermints inside of another glass ball. So be on the lookout. Those are coming this week and maybe early next week. Get that out of the way. I have a piece of Arteza 100% cotton watercolor paper. It's actually from their uh, cards that come with envelopes. And even though I'm cutting it down and mounting it onto another base, I'm using a base that's the same size as the envelope. So that way I, or same size as the original card. So that way I can still use the envelopes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not silly, but I do get two cards out of every one folded card. So that, I have this cute little watercolor palette. This is just something I like to use when I am just to, sort of sketch doodling with paint. I'm, I never feel precious about this. This is great for using for cards, for coloring in in color books. Oh, color books, if you haven't seen it. Great for the holidays, great for any time of the year. Wonderful gift to give to others. And it's very inexpensive. You can get my Floral Mandala Coloring Book from Amazon. And the link is listed down below, my Amazon link. It is uh, the direct link to the store. And then you go to my books section because I have a bunch of different books. If you're interested, look at that. See, I've got these also. These are dot journals, like bullet journals. So they have that dot grid page, but it's a very light dot. So you don't have to worry about it interfering with your stuff. All right, guys, I am done with my advertising. Not going to hear anything else except that I have a promotion right now on my Patreon for everyone who is signed up on my Patreon this month and paid as of the 1st of December, will be receiving a hand-painted, hand-drawn, hand-painted Christmas or holiday card, winter card. So that's listed down below in the more information also for my Patreon. I know I've got a lot of patrons here. Thank you so much for being patrons. I appreciate you so much. I also appreciate everyone who just tunes in and watches the whole video and clicks the like button and then subscribes. All right, now I'm done with the advertising. I am using a roll of tape on my card. This card is four by six. This is just a standard roll of masking tape and I'm using that, that's what I used right here to make this size ball, okay? And I am going to do it so that the ball has a little bit of room at the bottom of the card. And the neat thing about it is the roll of tape is about the thickness that I want to be. So I just set it down, kind of line it up. Don't have to tape it down or anything. And then I am also going to be using my eco pen, cardboard tube. You can throw it away. No, excuse me. You can put that in the recycle bin. You do have um, the pen in the pen insert. And I'm hoping that they'll, they will just come out with more pen inserts because these cardboard tubes are so sturdy 
they last so long. I'm trying to figure out a ornament or something that I can do where maybe I'm gluing a bunch of these tubes together, doing something, maybe making beads. I'm going to use my eco pen and I'm going to draw a circle, but I am going to leave. Let's see if you can see that right there at the top. I'm going to leave that about a three quarters of an inch wide space. And I'm just lining this up. I'm going to start my pen at one of those dots, just drawing around the inside of the circle, using it as a stencil or a template. I don't mind that my pen isn't as dark right there because I can just go and lightly color it in. Let's go to a little bit closer view. There we go. Now for the, the topper right here, I am going to put a sloped line on either side of that opening. And then I'm going to do a little scallop. All right. And the, sh the angle of this circle, I want to see if that will work. Ooh, if you want to match the angle of your ball to the top of your topper, you can. Look at that. It looks like it's the right angle for this. I'm going to go in and give this just a little bit of some detail. I'm doing kind of a long line and some little short lines, fill in that space and a little bit of a line going across. And then I'm going to make a loop, just a semicircle or a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Make it a little bit darker right where it attaches. And I'm going to make it pretty much just dark right here in the center. And I'm drawing a little string that's holding it up. Now, this is your base. You can do anything with this. Actually, I want to take a picture of that. Because, you know, sometimes you need to take pictures as you go along. If you take a picture of it, then you've got it for, see now, I could just print this out and draw and doodle inside and I don't have to keep redrawing my ornament. I can use that as a tracing template or I can just print it out on watercolor paper or whatever. So right here, I am going to take my pencil and good morning, everybody. I love that you're all here. Thank you. Oh, I am going to be doing a giveaway of the card we're actually making in the class today. So if you are interested in winning this card, copy, paste, and there it is. Today's word is solitude. Now, solitude does not mean loneliness. Solitude is being a part for contemplation, for rejuvenation, for filling your, your well. That's what solitude is. Solitude is chosen, not, um, not pushed upon you. And right now, I really like times of solitude and thinking and processing and learning and growing. That's, that's what's, what it means for me. So inside this ball, I am putting a snowy ground. You see how I did that right there? I went and just did sort of a slopey, jaggly, jaggly, jig jaggedy line. Guess I'm going to have to hold it up though, so you can see. Because my lighting, when it is just the pencil, the light just shines right across it. This is easy. See, we just did a jaggly line. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could, you know, make this into any kind of an ornament. I'm just doing a clear glass ball because I think that's fun. I think it's fun to be able to see into another little world. So thank you guys. I've missed you all. Robin, love to see you. Thank you for being back. Katie, Donna, woohoo, Gina, I'm doing, is it Miss Marianne from Romper Room? I'm not sure what her name was. I cannot remember at this point. But, so now we've got that line going across the front. I'm going to put just sort of a wobbly line going across the back. And see, it's kind of an arc. This is like all the snow in your snow globe that settled down to the bottom. All right. Oh, wonderful, Irene. You've got your watercolors on Friday and you've made two cards already. Oh, I love that. Oh, if you guys are interested on Tangi, I am doing two workshops. They are going to be um, video workshops in a Google Meetup so that you can actually show me your artwork as we're going along or you can uh, ask questions. So check out my Tangi. Uh, that is Tangi dot. Let's see here. There, there I am. You do have to download the app to participate on Tangi, but you don't have to download the app to just watch the videos. You can watch the videos on the computer but you can't um, like and follow if you're just on the computer, I believe. I think you have to be um, on the Tangi app or you do have to be logged into Tangi. I think that's what it was. But anyway, here we go. We're going to put this little house in and then the little cabin in the woods and then we will work on putting the trees in around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make just a box. A little house is basically a box, right? So I made a rectangle. I'm going to make a line that's whatever angle I make this line, I just have to make the line above it the same angle. So good morning, yes. So I have Let's see here. I will, I will paste the, or paste, I will pin the, there we go. The contest form is open and you are able to sign up for the possibility to win this card that we're working on right here. So what I did is I kind of matched the line up here. I tipped it down just a little bit because these are going away from us. But you don't have to worry too much about symmetry on that or perspective because you can hide it with a tree. <laughs> so now what I want to do is I'm going to make whatever pitch of roof I want this to be. and. I'm giving it kind of a high pitch and lots of eaves. You get to adjust. It's got one of those really high attics up there. You get to adjust it. And when I'm drawing on or using the ink to draw it on, I'm going to be putting icicles or the snow kind of running off the edge. Maybe not that far down because I do want a window on the side that I'm going to make yellow. So it looks like there's somebody home. I'm going to put a little door. See, this is your basic, your basic little house that you've been drawing since you were very, very small. I'm going to make my snow in the background go behind the house a little bit more and around. And then the snow is going to be bumped up all over the place. Right now, it doesn't look like much. Oh, don't forget the chimney. 
I'm going to move the chimney backwards on this one a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And there will be some snow coming up. Now I am going to grab my eraser and see about erasing out some of those lines so it's not as confusing. All right, so we've got our little house, and this is your basic little house. It's our little cabin in the woods. I might make that door a little bigger too. Put a little round window up above. <laughs> I can start, gin you can gingerbread this up if you want. Now, we're gonna be covering parts of this house, so I wanna get the trees in before I put the ink in. Hello, Harini, yes, I remember you. I'm going to be doing the snowman and um, the sleepy elf that we did on our lesson live here, but I'm gonna do it on Tangi also. So if you wanna be in a smaller class where you can ask questions and get the answers right away, you can sign up for that Tangi class. I am gonna put trees in. Now I'm just putting some lines to give me little placeholders. Big trees, little trees. These are kind of scribble trees. They're not, they're not going to be, um, well, as you can see here, they're indications of trees. They're not super, yes, this is a kneaded eraser. And I found one that I really liked. Um, I cannot remember the name. I believe that it's listed in my uh, Amazon store. And sometimes you get them and they are so hard and I don't have any control over that. I've gotten so many that were like um, really old. If they're old in the package and they're really hard and you can't squish it, I would contact the person you bought it from and take it back. Uh, if you go into an art store and you pick it up, don't just squeeze the packages because that makes them look really gnarly for other people, but you can give it a soft press and you can feel if it's going to be, uh, kneadable. So that's, uh, yeah, this one is three of them put together. This is three kneaded erasers put together because I have this thing when I am sketching, I usually hold this in my left hand and I'm, it's kind of like my, my security blanket. <laughs> oh, excellent, Harini, thank you. I am so glad that you're signed up. All right, so I wanna go in and I'm gonna put my trees in and then I'm going to fit the house lines in around it so I don't have to worry about it. The word of the day is solitude and it's pinned up above at the top of the chat. So the trees, they're sketchy. We're gonna zoom in more. We are going to zoom in more. There we go and focus. So they're kind of sketchy and what I do is I work in like little fans coming down they don't have to be filled in completely. You can make them tall. You can make them really scraggy, scraggy, scraggly. Make them different heights. So now Grandma Smith said this reminded her of a Bob Ross. I like that idea. You know what it also reminds me of? It reminds me of The Little House on the Prairie books by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And the first book was uh, Little Cabin in the Woods or Little House in the Woods. I think it was Cabin in the Woods. So I'm making my, my trunks end up in different spaces, different uh, layers. That way you end up, let's give you this part of it too. That way you end up with your trees feeling like there's depth in your in your actual paint or painting or drawing. 
Give them different heights. Make some tall, make some small. Have your trunks ending in different places. I'm going to put a tree right here in front of the house and its trunk is actually going to come right down in front. The snow is sort of banking up around things. There we go. We will be inking the house in, the little cabin. I have been in a Christmas spirit, well, since I started doing these Christmas cards and holiday winter cards and even, even when I did the uh, Dwali lantern, I need to, to get that just dropped as a video. I love that little lantern and it works so well for so many things. Again, I'm just dropping this in. The, the sample right here, I did this this morning or right before the lesson. So it didn't take me very long, about 15 minutes to do the whole thing, but I also was not talking. <laughs> See, just working down in little fan shapes, little odd shapes, mis misshapen. They can be tipped over a little bit. Maybe that one got blown by the wind. The tip of it got broken a long, long time ago. There was a big storm, a big, um, they called it the Columbus Day storm. That was back in the, back in the days when Columbus Day was a thing. Um, but the Columbus Day storm in the uh, Portland, Vancouver area, it brought it, like hurricane force winds. And the elementary school that I went to had a big stand of Douglas fir trees. And the tops of almost every single one of the trees, there were probably 30 trees in this stand. They cleared out all, so it was very much like this. They cleared out all of the brush. There were no little bushes and things underneath of it. And we got to play with those, around those trees on our playground. It was on our, our actual school playground. So it was so fun. All right, so... My little, my little forest for my little cabin in the woods. I'm going to go ahead and I'm doing kind of little um, jagged line around the roof edge, kind of like ice or snow coming down. Round off your corners if something is really covered with snow, you know how it's all rounded off with rounded off on the corners. I'm sort of pulling down a little bit. The roof is just going to be dark around the chimney. I'm saying that that roof there actually is not very well insulated. And so around the chimney, the snow is melted. All right, I'm just taking a quick look and there we go. Oh yeah, hey guys, Instagram um, is a really great place to uh, be getting some heads up and early, early information. I do stories on Instagram a lot. I try to post at least one picture a day usually of something that I'm working on. Sometimes it's something that we've already done in a class. Now I'm just putting a few little indications on that snow. So if I decided not to make that a colored picture, you could just do this all black and white. It, this is going to get colored, but you could do it black and white. There's a little bit of snow on the top of that chimney. And then I'm just going to put tiny indication of some smoke coming out. I am really in the holiday mood and yes, doing cards, thinking of others, making, uh, I have already put up a little decorative Christmas tree in my living room. Uh, this is the first year ever 
that I've put a Christmas tree up in my living room before the f- 1st of December. Usually it's after the 4th. So I'm going to set this in front of me and I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to focus down on the table. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. Let's get in really close so you can really see those details when we paint it in. There we go. Now I'm going to just erase. And I put this background on after. And I'll show you the trick to get that fun kind of snow spatter looked looking background. It's so easy. I love that it is so, so easy. Ah, I see a line that I missed the back of the chimney. See? Some little little lines on there like stone. And I can even put like some boards. Little lines like boards. And that window up there is going to be dark. The only window that's going to be lit is this one on the side. All right. So I'm just using a water brush. This is just a plastic tube with a valve in the middle here that allows water to come out through the tip. And this is a nice pointy one. It's getting a little frayed on the edge because I tend to be hard on my brushes. But what I wanna do is go in with, let's see here. We're gonna do the green and brown. We will work the sky and the snow in after we've got the house or the cabin and the trees. So what I'm going to do is put my first layer of color on the little cabin and that's just this sort of, um, it's sort of a medium brown, kind of a sepia almost. It's a happy brown. But this is my lightest color of brown that I'm putting on here. And as you work it with your, your brush, see, I'm not squeezing any water onto the paint pad right there. I'm just using the wet tip of the brush to pick up and move my color around. See how easy that is? Once you make a black and... Oh, shoot. I should have... You know what? I am going to take a picture of it. Even though I've got color on there, I can I can remove the color in a... In my... After my... Blah! Can I talk? I can remove the color in the computer on that little house. That way I've got a, co- a coloring sheet. There we are. Now I feel better about that. Let's see, get back to that brown. I'm going to take the next darker brown now, even though this has not dried all the way. It's not a ton of water on the page. So I'm taking just some darker brown right up under the edge of where the snow is. And really a lot of that darker brown towards the back of the house. I'm not going to do any color mixing on this one. I'm just picking up straight colors. But see how that makes it feel like you've got some depth going on here. I think we're going to put just the tiniest little hint of red, kind of a brick red, up on the chimney and down here even though the door I painted it in black I'm putting red on that door I think I'm a little hint of red trim on the windows and that window frame it's just a hint of color guys it's not a ton when I want to change from a strong color like red, I just squeeze my brush just a little bit, get a little water, and wipe it off on a piece of paper towel. 
Now I've got a lot of different greens on this palette and I like these a little bit more earthier greens. So I'm just taking, I'm not sure, they're all kind of olived out or kind of fur treed. These black pens are the Eco, E-C-O pen. And they, here, it's easier to read it on this. Eco pen. They come in a cardboard tube. They've got cardboard caps and cardboard barrels. So that can all be recycled or used for other projects. It's a really thick cardboard. I'm wondering if I can paint these and cut them off and use them like beads. Anybody want to see me just do a live where I just bring, just bring on that? Just go in live and just play with some of that uh, type of stuff, a little bit more crafty. Look at that, that brown or that that green, and I'm just laying it in. And I'm not coloring it in completely. I'm letting some of the tree have some white because it's like the snow. And when I put the background in, I will be leaving area around the trees. So it feels a little bit like they have snow on them. I am going to use a little bit of gouache to put the highlight in after we put the background, just because I like the effect of it washing over the top where you can kind of see through. It just adds to that uh, depth and shine to have it going over something. Let's see, did I just get my hand in there? Not sure. Oh well, you know what? It'll, it'll just be texture in the painting. So just get these get these painted in green whatever green you want to use I like a little bit more of a natural green than the um, this up here these are a little bit bright and I'm saying this is almost maybe almost a nighttime oh Maria thank you for coming lovely to see you hey guys if you haven't uh, checked her out yet Artsy Cupcake, Maria, she is amazing with the dollar store um, uh, upcycles. You go get stuff from the dollar store, and she shows you how to make it look like um, Pottery Barn. It's, it's incredible. So check her out. And she's on Instagram also. She's really, really on Instagram. I need to learn from Maria how to do Instagram because she's got it. She's dialing it in. But her, her YouTube channel is Artsy Cupcake. So there you go. <laughs> so just, just drop these colors in. Now, if you want to add some variety to your trees, you can just go grab another green that's a little bit different and just drop it in a couple spots. Because these are wet right now, it will just flow around in that wet spot and give you some variety to your trees. But don't go too overboard. Don't worry about it too much. I want to make that one a little taller. There we are. And now, we're going to start putting in the, the snow. Hello, Natalie and Regina. Oh, wow. Yeah, and happy Thanksgiving, guys, to those of you who are here in the States. And, you know, every day could be Thanksgiving. Even in a period of frustration, even if you don't live in the United States or Canada where we have, you know, National Day of Thanksgiving, I think every country has some type of uh, celebration that's a national holiday, that's a day of thank thanking our good, you know, our good luck. Thank you, Joan. Joan, I love this cabin too. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is just flip 
and start using some blues. I love, <laughs> I love these little palettes. So this is the 42 um, Superior Watercolor. It's a Chinese um, palette of watercolors. And I've had this for about a year and a half. And it's, it's so awesome for just picking up color and going right in. Now I am going to water my color down. I'm looking for my bl the blue that I wanted. Yeah, it was more this one. There we go. So I'm watering it down just a little bit. So when I go in and lay it down, I have a little bit of a chance to keep moving the, the color around. And you can always give it a little squeeze, give your brush a little squeeze to get that paint moving. You want to keep it pretty wet. And like I said before, when I'm going in and doing around the trees, I'm not worried about making it come in and be absolutely perfect. I want to leave some of the white. Because then it starts looking like there's a little bit of snow hanging out on the trees. There we go. I'm giving it a little bit of squeeze just to get a little bit more water down here as I'm laying it on. I'm not worried about reserving my white highlight. Like I said, I'm going to use some gouache or you could use white acrylic paint, craft paint, um, heavy body acrylic, any of them. They all work. Leave yourself some room around your trees. And now I'm going to take that blue, make it a little bit, make it a little bit different. I think I'm adding kind of a phthalo blue to it. I'm not sure. It's darker, but it's, yeah, there. Uh, so up around the edge, I'm putting a little bit darker blue. See how that just starts making it feel like it's the sky inside your, your little ball here. There we go. I like that, that kind of a look. Now I am going to grab a, a little bit more pigment. I'm going to come down and in this area underneath, I'm going to just put some of that blue, but I'm not doing it solid and I'm starting to make it feel kind of like it's snow in that this blue now is becoming a shadow. And it's going to be my shadow down here on the ground under the trees. If you look at snow, snow shadows tend to be gray and purple and blue. So let's pick that up so you can see it a little better. See how that's going in? These little shadows, they don't end up looking like water. They, they do look like snow, at least to me. I'm, maybe it looks like water to you, I'm not sure. But under the trees, get some, get some shadows. And then we'll put some shadows up on the up on the rooftop. Just a few little few little zigzags and they don't even have to match up with your really dark shadows that you've got. See how that looks just like just like snow now. I am going to pick up a little bit darker blue and make some of those shadows. Actually, I want to gray that down just a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is grab just a touch of some, some orange. Oh, that orange made it more green. I don't want green. Let's see, maybe I'll just grab the purple. 
Yeah, this purple works really well to kind of gray it down just a little bit. So there's a purple, um, kind of a, a light violet purple. Ah, pff, thump, sorry. Light violet purple. And I mix that just with a touch of that blue. Kind of grays it down. Maybe this purple will gray it down a little more. And then a lot of water. Boom. I just wanted it not quite as bright. Different shade. See how that's a little bit different shade? Gives us our layers of snow. A little bit darker towards the back. All right. You feeling the, the cold and... <laughs> wow. Okay, that's looking really, really good. I want to put, put the uh, background in, but I also want to put that little hanger in. And all I'm going to do for the hanger is I'm taking a very light application of the black. Very light. Yeah. And I still had a little bit of the blue in my brush. So a little black and blue makes kind of a, a soft gray. And I'm going to use that to give us some shadow on the little hanger. And it makes it feel sort of almost metallic. Hello, Shalom. I am Stephanie from Deliberately Creative, and we are here doing a fun little holiday card with a cabin. <laughs> I am going to take a touch of orange and put that kind of in the corner of that window and then work it down just a smidge, just a little bit. It just makes it feel like there's a little bit more depth in there. And we're going to put that background in. I am going to grab a bigger brush. And I'm going to zoom out just a bit so you can see better. So it's, we're going to cover the whole card. <laughs> All right. Yay. So, oh, and remember, guys, up at the top of the chat, there is a uh, link to be able to sign up and win this card. I am looking at in the future, probably starting to collect uh, email addresses for my newsletter. I'm not doing it in this one because I didn't let you know on the form, but uh, soon I am going to start collecting email addresses for for my newsletter, because I want to try and try, <laughs> try and start getting the newsletter out there more consistently. So I'm taking that kind of blue that we have in the background there, and I'm just getting a nice, nice puddle of it. And I think I'm going to try and just add another color into it. So it's not exactly the same. We are taped down, so we're going to have that nice taped off border. And I want to make sure that my brush is wet, but I'm not wetting the paper. I'm just going in. That needs to be a needs to be a little bit more different. A lot more water. There we go. Sometimes all you need is more water to make something feel different. That doesn't feel different enough. But we can make it feel more different in just a second. I'm just working my way carefully around the ball. And 
just pick that paint up, keep it, keep the edge wet, and then you're able to get the color to move all the way down without ending up with, with um, hard lines. Like I, down here at the bottom, kind of ended up with a hard line because my brush sort of ran out of, ran out of water. There we go. So while that is slightly wet, I'm going to go and just take a crumpled up piece of tissue and see if I can lighten up some spots, start getting some texture. But the fun sort of snow splatter texture is gonna come in a second. I am looking at this. I want to change up that color a little more. Let's see, maybe that color. Ah, there it is. That was the one that I needed. That was the one that I wanted. You know what? We're gonna add another layer of color on here. So I'm going to use wet brush Huh. I mixed the same color again. Oh well. I'm just going to keep it darker up there at the top. There we go. We're just going to give it a little bit more of a vignette. See, that's the thing with watercolor. Sometimes it's hard to replicate. And that's okay because then every card you make is an individual. Oh no, the color's different enough. All right, so I am going to let that soak in for just a second. Maybe put a touch of that color down here in the snow because we're getting really close. So now what I want to do, I'm taking my brush and you know how usually you don't want to get water drops on your painting. I'm being very careful. I'm putting the water drops just out here around the edges. And it gives us that lovely snow splatter look. Which you can't see because it's reflecting off the paper right now. There lovely snow splatter look and I'm going to dry it so I'm sorry the sound is going to get a little uh, it's going to get a little loud I'm sorry my microphone is really good and picks up all the sound yeah but I need to dry this so we can put the gouache on and then it's all it will all be done and we'll do our giveaway for this card So yeah, sometimes you don't want to get water splats on your paintings, and sometimes you do. There, you can start start to see that that really soft, snowy effect. Yes, you can use salt. Salt will give you a very similar effect, um, possibly more controlled. But to really make salt work as an effect, you need to put the salt on your wet paint and then walk away and let the salt slowly absorb the pigments. Uh, if you, if you just put the salt on and dry it really fast, all you're going to do is dry everything really fast and your salt will just flake off and it won't do anything. So yes, you can use salt to do that. I am grabbing my, I just have a tube of the Arteza gouache. Any gouache, any, I mean, you could use white, white craft acrylic, um, regular acrylic, any of the, any of the things. And I'm going to put just a tiny dab. 
I don't need a lot. Yes, if you're all about control, you can get a beautiful snow effect with the larger flake um, kosher salt, uh, sea salt, and you can place them where you want them to be on your wet painting. So right before I had dried it, I would have just dropped the salt on and walked away, let it dry, and then you come back. Epsom salt, I don't know. Epsom salt is a uh, magnesium salt. Uh, it's not a sodium chloride. So I, I don't know. What I would say is if you've got it, put some watercolor on the same kind of watercolor paper and test and see. Now, I want to show you here. I did my reflection with a big block, a smaller block, and a smaller block. I kept my edges curved and I tried to give a little bit of definition between the blocks and this one over here I did a big block and just the indication of a very blurry one you guys know what those blocks are right it's the reflection of windows in the room where this ball is hanging that's what the blocks are so when you see shadows and reflections on things it's the reflection of something that's in the environment where the object is. I hope that, I hope that, that helps you. That's good information. Now you do have to be a little bit brave right now. And I do need to have a little bit more water on my brush. You want your paint to be kind of flowy, almost translucent. But nice thing about gouache is that I can go in and re-wet this. Salt does not work with acrylic paint to get that effect. Um, I would try, if you're working acrylic paint on paper, Use your acrylic paint in really super thin layers and before the paint is dry, do the water drops on it. Is what I would, I would try. And you know, always experiment. Don't, don't do your experiment on your painting that you're really, you know, you love what you're doing. Don't, don't do the experiment on that paper that you've got a project going on. Now the gouache will pick up the watercolor. So be careful. Don't rub back and forth. The You can see the one here in the middle kind of picked up the green. After it's dry, I can go back in and add another layer of gouache. See, just like that. And as long as I don't rub it, it's going to see, I want that one to be a little bit higher. And that's one of the things, as long as you don't rub it, it's not going to pick up the paint underneath there. I need to finish my, I need to finish my sentences and I'm going to put another one over here. I like that look. Something to kind of be aware of is if you can keep that outside edge of your, your highlight sort of going with the curve. See, I'm, I'm a little flat right there. If you can have it follow the curve of your object. So if it is a curved object, but you don't want it to be a lace, you want it to be or a scallop, you want it to be one smooth curve because that's what this object is, is one smooth curve. And your highlights don't have to be complete and hard all the way down. See, you can do just a tiny little bit.
this is a yes this is this is more of a color book type method where you put your color on in very controlled controlled places controlled spaces i'm just trying to lighten up this bottom edge just a little bit of my highlight so it's a little more translucent and that's something that you know you can do with your gouache see that worked but I'm still that edge right there so I'm just gonna keep tiny little touch see a tiny little touch is all it takes sometimes doesn't always take putting every you know every trick in the book sometimes just one little tiny touch of paint is all you need and I want to lighten that up right over that tree area boom so now I can take just a very thin layer of white, just sheer right over that. There we go. I'm going to put one little reflection down here, just sort of a dry brush reflection. You can't hardly even see it because it's almost in the white. And then, just because I want some, I'm going to put a few little drops of like snow. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that, but my stomach just rumbled. It's telling me, hey, you need to finish up here. There we go. A little bit of the snow. A couple spots. If it dropped on a tree in a weird place, that's okay. That one I'm going to clean off, and that's why it's okay. there <laughs> all right let's pull that tape off so pulling the tape off and this is just a um, paper drafting tape it's made for going on paper and it's made for peeling off of paper it is not a painter's tape I just put my thumb in the gouache. It's not an actual painter's tape. It's made for uh, drafting, but it works so well for doing this. And it's way cheaper than the artist tape. Artist tape has more of a plastic coating to it. I need to sign it so that people don't go, hey, you're supposed to sign it. So I'm gonna sign it. And put my little initial block inside the snow globe. Oh, let's zoom out. So there you go. All right, if you're here for the uh, giveaway, make sure that you have put in your giveaway entry up at the top of the chat. We are gonna do that. I will also post it one more time right here. Whoops, that's the wrong one. I just posted my Tangi. That's okay, I'm on Tangi. Uh, here is the, I'm gonna put the link for my books on Amazon copy. So all of my books on Amazon, while you're finishing up putting in your entry for the card today with this one last, one last one, copy and paste. 
All right. So while you're waiting, I'm going to give you one more minute. I have 931 right now. So at 932, I'm going to close the close the giveaway. So today's word was solitude. Remember that solitude does not mean lonely. Solitude is a choice. This is the one. Uh, this is just a piece of scrapbooking paper from a pad of paper that was given to me a few years ago as a secret Santa gift. That person knew me well. <laughs> Or they read my information and followed it really well. <laughs> so, all right, 9.32. The entries are now closing. All right, entries are closed, guys. I'm going to bring up the... spreadsheet. I'm just hiding the email addresses so that so that we've got everybody. So I'm going to be putting in to let's see. Do I have it up here? Random.org. Ooh, I do. All right. So I am going to try something. I'm going to try something. Let's see here. Desk wide view. And then I can go display capture. I'm trying something new. <laughs> and turn that on or random.org. I got it up here. <laughs> All right, so random.org. And we also have the uh, list of people. You can't really read it very well. I can read it. <laughs> the, my list of folks. And we have a 20, let's see, it's, I'm going to put one through 24. And uh, because that's putting an, an extra number at the front and at the end because our people's numbers in here are 2 through 23. So 1 to 24. If 1 or 24 comes up, I'll just draw again. So we're going to go 1 through 24. And generate. Number 15. Okay, number 15. So now we're going to go to the form and find out who is number 15 is Mary Forbes. Congratulations, Mary. That is so cool. All right. So Mary, I will be sending you an email to get your uh, street address. I will be mailing last Thursdays and today's out on Tuesday. So it will go out before our holiday, hopefully. And uh, <laughs> I have to photograph it and scan it and then get it all packaged up and shipped off to you guys. So that's going to be so awesome. All right. We don't need the display capture up anymore. And now I can go back and see what everybody's saying. <laughs> all right. So thank you guys so much for being here. Remember, I have books. These are all awesome for holiday gifts. They are on my Amazon shop. They are all my books. The inside of these little guys is just a nice light dot grid. It makes it really nice for doing your doodling, doing your sketches, catching, you know, I did, I did a doodle in this one. It's nice because you've got a grid to be able to keep your lines straight, work on your work on your calligraphy, whatever. And 
the Floral Mandala's coloring book. I know I've got a lot of people here who have already purchased many copies. <laughs> and I thank you and bless you. And I am so grateful that all of you are joining me, that you're sharing my videos, sharing my products, and sharing your creativity with me. That's really the big thing. I love sharing my creativity with you, but even more, I love seeing your creativity, your projects. And if you want to share your artwork, and I have a video on my tangy that goes along with, so I've got the gnomes and I've got uh, the snowmen and things like that that are already on my tangy as one minute videos, you can share your artwork from my YouTube videos on those videos too. So you can get direct comment on your artwork right there. Thank you guys. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. Oh yeah, and, rem and remember, I have Ooh. two more designs coming up. We've got the snowman in the glass ball and we've got the peppermints. So I am doing all of the designs. So guys, thanks and we'll see you soon.